Welcome back to the shop. I was mailed a little Christmas present, a TPS tool. They mailed it to me to use here in the shop, so that's pretty cool. So in this video, it's going to be kind of an introduction to that tool. Now, I'm sure you've seen some of my other videos where I walk you through checking your TPS or changing a TPS, you know, connecting it with connecting to it with alligator clips on meter and all that kind of stuff. This tool is supposed to simplify things, so that's pretty cool. Um, it's supposed to work on all bikes, two strokes, four strokes, you name it. If it's got a TPS, it connects to it. So let's open the box and see what we got. All right, so it comes in this nice little carry case here. That's pretty cool. Uh, looks like it has some instructions. All right, yeah, we're probably not gonna read them. <laughs> no, we probably will, we'll see. A uh, nine volt battery, here's the tool itself. It feels nice. It's got a little rubber protection thing over it. Got it on and off right there. I guess we got to take that off to put the 9 volt battery in it. So let me go take that off now. Oh, and it comes with all these different terminal connector connections right here. So you can connect to different makes and models. Now Matt at TPMS Tool told me that they have a website. He sent me a link to that. I'll show you that in a minute. But they have a website where he collects all the different models what the TPS setting is on a good known running bike or if someone submits that information to him or whatever because um, as you know with some bikes they don't tell you what what the TPS is supposed to be set at in the manual I mean it's hard to find and some bikes like the YFZ or YZ250F and YZ450F they just tell you you have to buy this expensive $600 tool to set it and they don't really tell you how to set it and that's why if you watch my video where I did it with the ohm meter um, I, I, I show you that, you know, it, you get a reading at idle if your throttle position system went bad up in the throttle, and you just put the new one in and match it to that same. Or you can take a reading from your bike when it's still new and fresh and running good, and then if something ever goes south, then um, you know what to set the new one to. And on some bikes, they do give you the instructions or the, the settings to set it. Like on the YZ250 two-stroke, the manual clearly tells you what it's supposed to be set at. So it's just give or take. But um, yeah, so let me figure out. We're gonna we're gonna hook it up to this YZ250 right here. Let me get all this set up, get the nine volt battery in, it, and I'll be right back. Okay, I followed their instructions right here. It says most motors, the ground, the black wire connects the ground right here, and the red to the FB, and the green to the five volt. Let's test it on, turn it on. Yes, there it is. All right, let's take it to this YZ250 up and see what it does. Okay, let me unplug TPS into here. There we go, got it unplugged. And I'll plug in the TPS tool. Okay. Let me shut this light so you can see the screen. Move it back a little bit. Alright, let's turn it on and see what we get. Get the point forty six. Okay, let me go full throttle, see what happens. Bam! A three point sixty two. That's really cool. What I'm gonna do to be on the safe side for this bike is I'm gonna write that down. Point forty six. And then I'm also going to write down the full throttle value as well. That way in case this TPS, TPS or ever goes bad, I'll know where to set it at. Now keep in mind on some bikes, if you're going to... some bikes, when you change the idle adjustment, all it's doing is opening or closing the throttle angle. And that's going to change your TPS reading. So on some bikes, you're going to want... Like I believe this is one of them. Matter of fact, we're going to find out right now. Let's see. Okay, you see it on camera there? Now it's reading. All right, let me go over here to the idle adjustment. I'm going to turn the idle up some. Let's see what happens. Nope, this one doesn't. Now I'm turning it down some. Okay, so this one doesn't change the throttle blade opening. I just went full throttle there. Now I'm back at idle. So this one, you can just let go of the throttle, take your reading, and that's it. But on some bikes, like I mentioned, that the when you adjust the idle, all you're doing is cracking the throttle blade open or close a little bit. On them bikes, you're going to want to turn the idle all the way down, as low as you can get it. And then get your your closed throttle reading. And then you can just punch it to get your full throttle reading. Write that down, keep that stored just in case you ever have an issue. It's pretty cool. On their webpage here where they have their stored database of the different models and what they found the readings to be. Let's see, we got a 22... Uh, YZ250FX and a 22 YZ250F. We don't have a 25 like what, like the bike that I have right here. But let's see what 
readings these are supposed to be at. So the 22 YZ250, up, they say 0.45 idle. I was getting a 0.46. Um, and then on the uh, two YZ250FX22, they're saying 0.48 at idle. So yeah, I, th I think anywhere in that range, honestly, it's going to be fine. But it's, it's, it is convenient you have this. You can uh, fall back on that if you don't, don't know what your bike's supposed to be at. Here's what I was talking about. This is the manual for this YZ250F. To adjust the throttle position sensor, we would need the Yamaha Diagnostic Tool. Now, I priced this tool, and it's expensive. If I remember correctly, it was $600. And then they tell you to adjust the throttle position sensor mounting angle until 11 to 14 appears on the Yamaha Diagnostic Tool. So they don't actually give you like a voltage reading or ohm reading or anything like that, which tells us nothing unless we buy their expensive tool. And that tool's probably only going to work for a handful of bikes for Yamaha. So unless you work on Yamahas all day long and only Yamahas, you maybe might be worth buying it. Maybe you work at a Yamaha dealer and you have that tool available. But for people like me that work on pretty much all the brands out there, this one tool right here to be able to, be able to connect to pretty much any brand and check the TPS and adjust the TPS, it's looking pretty promising. All right, let me go ahead and put this back to normal. We're going to test fire it, make sure we didn't break anything, and then we're going to try it on the YZ252 stroke. Okay, let's give her a test fire, make sure everything is good. No check engine lights. Everything is good. Sweet. Now I'm going to bring the YZ250 front center. Let's check that one out. Okay, I believe I have the right terminal on for the YZ252 stroke. Let's go try it out. I already got it unplugged. I had to do that because that thing's a pain in the butt with that rubber boot in the way. So I did that off camera. But uh, let me make sure I get this connected correctly here. There we go. Okay, let's turn it on. Alright, it's reading 3.87. Let's go full throttle. 4.76 let go of the throttle hard 3.86 flip it a few times now this is one bike I will say as you lower the throttle the I mean the idle RPMs it will lower the value so keep that in mind you're gonna want to turn your idle all the way down if you're gonna be taking a reading uh, if you're looking to record what your bike set at so in case you have a TPS break down the road and you had to replace it you can do that. I, I see it kind of wiggles around a little bit down at idle, full throttle again. But it does seem to stay in about the 3.8 range, so let's let's look in the manual, see what it says. All right, after looking in the manual, it mentions the throttle position sensor output voltage should be 0.5 to 0.7. It's showing you how to adjust it right there. And so what I did is I followed their instructions and I swapped the green and the red wire around. And now I'm getting a point. 6.1 at idle which is right in the middle of their 0.5 to 0.7 is right here the adapter is plugged into three connections on the top of the unit the colors can be plugged into different locations for different motors so i think that's the situation for the yz250 two stroke so let's play with it again all right turn it back on all right so 0 0.061 full throttle i'm getting a uh, 3.6 now I'm going to show you. Let me set this up right here where it kind of sits right there. Okay, now what I'm going to show you is that it changes as you adjust the idle. On this bike it does. Some bikes, some models it might not, but on this one it definitely does. I'm going to go down. Let's see. There it goes. The numbers are going down. So you can see right there that it will change as you adjust the idle. So if you're taking a reading on your own bike, you're going to want to lower the idle on this bike all the way down to take your reading. Of course, full throttle will always be the same because there's no uh, throttle stop adjustment for full throttle. It's always going to read the same. But uh, idle on this bike, because it lifts up the throttle slide and sets it down as you adjust the idle, it's going to change the TPS reading. All right, one more time. Full throttle, back down, full throttle back down okay shut it down and put the bike back to normal compared to what their uh website says yz252 stroke this is a 2005 but as you know they're the same from 2005 all 
2003 or something like that all the way to 2022. It says .55 on official. Well, that's close enough, considering the manual said .5 to .7. Now keep in mind for the YZ252 stroke, it does mention to set your idle between 17 and 1900 RPMs and then set your TPS to 0.5 to 0.7 volts. So if you're going to adjust your P TPS from scratch, that's what I'm going to say to do. However, if you're just wanting to, to record your reading so you can write it down so you can duplicate it in the future, then I would turn the idle all the way down and get it all the way down because then that's all it's going to be as low as it can go to stop and then record your TPS. Or do it however the heck you want. There's more than one way to skin a cat, right? All right, so so far, the pros of this tool is it works on pretty much every brand bike out there. It works, I plugged it in, it works, that's awesome. You don't have to have the bike running. Like if I was to follow Yamaha's instructions right there to set this TPS, I would have to actually have the bike running and tap into the wires going to the TPS with the ohm meter while it's running idling because this bike doesn't have a battery right so there's gonna to, to have power going to the TPS to get a TPS reading the bike has to be running for the stator to produce some electricity for the YZ 250F and 450 with the battery or any of your like CRF 450 the battery or whatever that's a different story they can have power just by tapping the button and lighting it up you don't have to actually have the bike running to uh, test or check the the TPS with a ohm meter but this tool right here, you don't even have to do that. It has its own power, the 9-volt battery. All you use connected to the TPS. You don't have to light up the system. Um, on this bike, I wouldn't have to have it running, so that's pretty convenient. And on your older fuel injection bikes, like the 20, 2009 to 2017 or so, like your Kickstart fuel injection bikes, like, for example, a 2015 YZ450. That's a Kickstart bike, but it's fuel injection. So it doesn't have a battery. On them bikes, typically, I, I, what I do to set the TPS is I use the Yamaha uh, tuner, the handheld little tuner. You plug into it, and it supplies power to the TPS and to the CDI so you can get a reading, and I adjust it with that. But that tool, if you haven't tried buying one lately, it's nearly impossible to find anymore. Sometimes you can find used ones on eBay, but they're, they don't sell them new anymore, and they're real hard to find. Um, I have one. I keep it because this is what I do for a living. But that's where this can come in handy. So, the pros. It works, and it works good. It works on multiple different bikes. That's really cool. You don't have to have the bike running, and uh, you don't have to rely on the bike's own battery. That's pretty cool. The cons. The cons are these connectors, they're kind of tough when you get it on there to get them back off. I really had to fight to get the one off on the 250F. It really clips on there good. I had to stick a flathead up in there. I don't know if you see the marks and press on it pretty good. And then he does mention in the manual the connection can be tight when they're new especially these right here and he mentions to use a pair of uh, needle nose pliers to get them out i didn't so much have a problem getting these out it was mainly these but i'm sure they're going to break in and become easier and that's a very minor complaint considering the tool actually works pretty good their web page if you're interested in one of these is tpstool.com uh, you can also pick them up on amazon let's see right here they have them on Amazon. All you, I got to, all you have to do is search up TPS Tool. That's what I did, and it'll be the first one in line. I want to say thanks, Matt, for mailing me this. It's going to get a lot of use in the shop. I'm sure of that. Uh, I have a bike coming to me on Friday that it could be a TPS issue, so you know, the tool might come in handy for that. If you're watching this video and want to geek out a little bit more on TPSs or power jets on these or whatever, down in the description I have several links to TPS videos I've done as well as on the YZ252 stroke, uh, the TPS and the uh, power jet. Checking the power jet, going, I basically geeked out on the power jet, ripped all through it, checked it all out, showed you how it works, when it works, what it does, that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in that, just check down in the description. This weekend, I will be riding Spider MX on Saturday. Been having fun out there at that track. I think I'm going to be taking the YZ252 stroke. I've been doing some tuning on the forks, kind of looking for a little bit of a better setting. I think I'm going to take this bike, spend a little more time on it, because I have a race coming up in about a month and a half at Clay Goalie MX. It's a 33-lap race. It's going to be a long one. So I'm hoping to get this dialed in for that race. But wherever you guys are riding at this weekend, have a good weekend. Make sure you get some good riding in. And uh, that's a wrap. I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.